a lot of potential benefits from more immigration in East Asian countries, uh, especially because many of these countries are now aging at a very rapid pace so that they're increasingly facing a scarcity of different types of workers, especially uh, low-skilled younger workers. Um, I think that in many cases, because of the politics around immigration and because the benefits are not always so obvious to people, uh, that the benefits are often underestimated. So the greatest benefit, of course, of allowing immigration is that you bring in workers who can do things more cheaply than your own people. And I think for East Asian uh, countries, this is especially true for low-skilled workers. So if I bring in more low-skilled workers, I can have very cheap construction and infrastructure. I can provide uh, domestic uh, help, which is a big program in Hong Kong, that can uh, be of great benefit to families. Uh, and beyond the direct low cost, there's a lot of very powerful potential spillover effects of greater immigration. So uh, a booming infrastructure sector can provide a higher productivity environment for firms and create demand for additional workers. Um, it can create jobs for engineers and architects um, in the construction sector. Uh, domestic helpers, uh, by uh, taking care of children, can allow mothers to enter the labor market in greater numbers. Uh, so there are many benefits, and although countries have a reasonable concern that some time of workers might start to compete with their own workers in the same jobs, uh, if the benefits outweigh the costs, which I think is often true, then there should be a way to design schemes that compensate uh, the people who lose out by uh, transferring kind of the resources from the people who are benefiting. So there are two big trends in the world that are affecting, I think, the calculation about the benefits of immigration. Uh, first is technology is changing. So if I think that I have a scarcity of workers, I the labor is too expensive, I can of course just replace that work with machines or robots. Uh, and I think that's definitely uh, something that's happening in, in, in particular sectors of the economy. But for the most part, I think there's still going to be many years before robots can replace workers in many occupations. Uh, so I think there's going to be many cases where uh, workers are irreplaceable. Now the other aspect of globalization is that rather than uh, for tradable goods, Rather than import workers, another opportunity, of course, is to just use foreign direct investment and make investments in other countries and hire the workers there. And uh, I think that can complicate things, obviously. And what is most advantageous really will depend on the ability to produce competitively in those other countries as opposed to at home. If there's already a very built-up environment at home that's extremely globally competitive, it may be actually be more efficient to bring in workers uh, from the outside. But the non-tradable sector uh, goods and services, uh, like construction, like uh, domestic help, uh, these are cases where I think the benefits of allowing workers in uh, through guest worker programs or other, other types of immigration uh, is a clear win-win. So I think there's still a very large gap between perception of the impact of immigrants and the actual impacts of immigrants. And a part of it is I think that people have a very natural uh, instinct to be skeptical of outsiders or to view them as competitors for, for local jobs. And so I think the main issue is that uh, people don't appreciate really the true benefits of these uh, programs that are a bit more open and allowing more workers into the country. One thing the government can do to help address that is to provide better information about these benefits. And I think uh, the research community can actually also contribute by providing really fact-based evidence that shows that these programs are really beneficial and don't harm uh, local residents uh, so much. Um, there are also many other things I think that countries can do to promote greater labor mobility. Um, I was recently at a, a workshop on promoting uh, labor mobility in Asia, in the APEC countries. And uh, a lot of uh, very good ideas were mentioned. Uh, for instance, uh, providing kind of qualification systems that can be recognized so people can really understand the skill level of workers that receive different training in the same occupations across countries. 
uh, but things like standardizing employment contracts, visa procedures, thinking of ways to relieve the credit constraints that often inhibit people from being able to move to other countries, all are ways to just make it uh, less costly and easier uh, for this type of movement to occur in the cases where the governments do decide that this is uh, in the country's uh, best interest. Mm -hmm.